Well, except for a rainy day, you're coming to God's house. I mean, it's a good day to be in God's house. Whatever day is a good day to be in God's house, but today will be exceptional because it's raining. <coughs> Before we get started here, I'm going to ask Eric, can you open up this prayer? Sure. Go pray. Father, we, uh, we come to you with uh, praise and thankfulness that you are with us each and every day. We, we uh, cannot understand the, the love that you have for us, even uh, to the point of giving your son's life for us that we might be saved. Watch over us now as we listen to your word through uh, Neil. Uh, allow us to be nourished uh, spiritually and as we go forth this morning to our daily lives, may others see Christ more alive in us and what was said to you. couple areas of scripture. First we're going to start in Luke chapter 7 verse 1. What a 
amazes me here is that he sat back and he asked some elders to come to Jesus. So it says, certain centurion slave, oh, excuse me, when he heard about Jesus. Now, where did he hear about Jesus? They really don't say how he heard about Jesus. But he heard about Jesus. And that time, of course, with the miracles that Jesus was doing, uh, basically, you know what I mean? A lot of people heard of the miracles that he was doing. Raising the dead, healing the blind, you know, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so I'm sure he got wind of this, you know what I mean? And, 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 and this. So, but as we go here, uh, what amazes me is that the centurion did not feel worthy for Jesus to come under this rule. Now there's a reason for this in Jewish customs there that if you're a rabbi, if you're a pre in the priesthood, basically in the priesthood, you cannot go under a sinner's roof. You cannot enter a sinner's house, especially a Roman. You know what I mean? You, go under a you, you were just taboo. You just did not do that. So the centurion knew that Jesus, as being a rabbi, would, you know what I mean, could not enter his home. But it says here, Jesus was started on his way, here in verse 6, he started on the way with him, Jesus was totally, completely prepared to go into the centurion's home. But he said, Lord, do not trouble yourself further, for I'm not worthy to come on, for you to come on the For this reason, I didn't even consider myself worthy to come to you, to, but just to say the word, and my servant will be healed. Now there we go. He knew that Jesus said, just, he, this, this is where he comes, to say the word, Lord. To say the word, and my servant will be healed. To say the word. <clears throat> For I too am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Now I can relate to that because I have been in areas where I was uh, uh, under authority and had authority. Uh, I've actually uh, managed eight restaurants, you know what I mean, at one time. <clears throat> had 247 employees under me. And, and it's like, you know, hey, well, you got to do this, you got to do that, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and of course it happened. <clears throat> you know, I would call it because we, we have to do it this way, then we have to do it that way. Because someone told me that you better do it that way. But it was just amazing that this centurion sits back and says, he knew, he understood authority. And by this understanding of authority, he understood Jesus' authority. A divine authority. <clears throat> now when Jesus heard this, and that's where he was made, he marveled at it. He said, wow. And turned and said to the multitude that was following him, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such a thing. Because the centurion said, Lord, say the word, and it will be done. Okay. Ain't that amazing? Just say the word. That's where we, you know, we need that type of thing. Lord, just say the word. As you pray, say the word, and it will be done. Amazing faith. Now we're going to go to another story here. In Matthew 15, we're going to go there. Verse 21 to 28. The faith of a Canaanite woman. When you get there, I'll give you a couple minutes and you get there. Matthew 15, what? Uh, verse starting at verse 21.
But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, your faith is great. Be it done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. Well, we're going to go, but we're going to dissect this a little bit here. She's a Canaanite, but she's a Gentile. <clears throat> but what, what really gets here is, I mean, her daughter, she's asking the Lord to help her daughter. She was demon possessed. I mean, a lot of people are hearing the Bible has, <clears throat> has that problem. <clears throat> Uh, being healed because they have the evil spirit inside of them. <clears throat> she says she's begging Jesus, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. Because <clears throat> she knew about Jesus. She's a Canaanite, but she knew about Jesus. <clears throat> but here is, he didn't answer at first. And he, 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 he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep, lost sheep of the house of Israel. Basically, that's true. Jesus, when, when Jesus came down here, was born or he was there for the Jew first. He was there to teach the Jews, to heal the Jews, you know, the miracles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that was his, you know, one of, the, one of his missions. It's only for the for the Jew. It was for the Jews. Now, of course, his people, the Jews. So he was there for the Jews first. <clears throat> And that's why he said it's not good to take the children's bread, which means he is the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. So it's not good to take the bread and throw it to the dogs. Which is Sam. Canaanite people was not, you know what I mean, that you know what I mean? They they they, they were called dogs. I mean, you know, dogs is um, uh, not good. You know what I mean? We we don't say it today. Language. Uh, <clears throat> dogs was actually a, 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 that's just what they, they described them as, as dogs. They was undesired. <clears throat> but as it goes on, <clears throat> excuse my throat here a little bit, I'm dealing with a little chest cold. <clears throat> but here, but here, this is what she said. <clears throat> But she said, yes, Lord. Which right there she knew, yes. I am undesired. I am a Canaanite. I am uh, not worthy. But even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from the master's table. But of course, you got a dog. He's right there underneath the table. He's wanting, he's wanting the crumbs. <clears throat> he's wanting anything that's going to fall off that table. So what she's saying to Jesus... I know this, but whatever you can give, I will take. I don't care if it's just a crumb. Whatever you can do for me, I will take. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh woman, your faith is great. Be it done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed. faith of a Canaanite woman, but she didn't care. All she wanted was a little bit of what Jesus was offering. She believed that he would She believed that he <clears throat> could heal her daughter. She believed 100 percent And when Jesus says, I'm here for the house of Israel, she knew right then and there yeah, he wasn't here for her. He was not there for her. But because of her faith, because she's willing to take whatever he gives, she's willing to take. And her faith, because of her faith, killed the God. But cast it, took the demon out of the God. Amazing faith. Well, we're going to go one more. That's Luke chapter 7. Starting at 36.
Jesus, this, this is one where a woman anoints Jesus. Luke, Luke chapter 7, verse 36. Okay. Let's start right there. <clears throat> They did not, there was a custom 
the custom in, in Jewish custom is, is when you enter someone's house, you, they had someone there to, to wash your feet. Because they would wash the dust, you know, and all these things, whatever. It was just a custom they had that they would wash your feet. But here Jesus said when he came into Simon's house, no one washed his feet. No one gave him the oil, I mean, you know what I mean? No one gave him nothing. But the sinner came in. Now this Simon guy is supposed to be a righteous man, free him, free slip. But a sinner comes in there and gives Jesus everything that he was supposed to give them. But she did it to Jesus. Yes, he gave them. Amazing story. <clears throat> now we sit there and we discussed here the faith of the centurion, the faith of the Canaanite woman, and the sinful woman. What does these three people have in common? Does anybody know? These three people, what do they have in common? They were despised. We're going to go first with the with the centurion. The centurion, yes, he was loved in his city, but he was a Roman. Okay, a Roman back in those days, in Jesus' times, was despised. They were they, they, people was Jews were scared of. Now, if he would have went to any other city besides the city that people that knew him, and he's dressed in his Roman outfit, you know, his armor and all that, and he'd walk into any city that no one knew him, they would be afraid of him. They would despise him. I mean, they, they, they hated Romans because Rome, because the Romans occupied them, controlled them, and they did not like that. <clears throat> so even though he did, he loved the people, but still yet he was despised by the people because he had to be over them. We're going to go with the faith of the Canaanite woman. Well, Canaanite, if you've read the Old Testament, was Jew, was the Jewish people's worst enemy. I mean, Canaanites, they despised Canaanites like, oh, for years and years uh, of fighting and et cetera, et cetera. The Canaanites always wanted to kill the Jews. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> that Canaanite woman was completely despised by all Jewish people. All Jewish people. All completely. <clears throat> so she was a, the poor, she was despised. And then the sinful woman. I explained to you, the sinful woman, is that back then, if they said you are a sinner, it could be adultery, theft, I mean, it could be a multitude of sins. No, no one really knows what all sins that she has committed. <clears throat> but you're despised. You know, if you've done, the, done these things, and you was, you know, the Pharisees, or the priesthood, the people, they despise you. You was outcast. More like you had leprosy, you know what I mean? Get away from me. They wouldn't go around you. They wouldn't talk to you. They wouldn't do nothing with you. He was a second class citizen. <clears throat> and basically, to the Jewish, all three of these people were second class citizens. Completely. They were despised, hated, uh, they were just evil to the, to the Jewish community. But not to Jesus, though. Not to Jesus. Jesus had compassion on these people, He loved these people. He healed his people. He forgave these people for their sins. He did not see them as despicable, despisable. He did not see them as deplorable. He see them as children that needed redemption, that needed forgiveness, that needed healing. He see them as them. So with these three people in, this, in, 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 in these stories here, y'all, it's up. Uh, it really just touched my heart because today we might feel that we're not worthy of Jesus' healings or forgiveness. We might not think we're not worthy, but we are. We're totally worthy. And when it comes to faith, each, all three of these people believed. And this is why. I'm going to come to you guys 100%. I want you to believe. I want you to believe that you can come to Jesus, confess your sins, pour out to his feet, cry, that he will forgive you. If you need healing, or you know someone needs healing, come to Jesus. Pray to him. Believe. Just like the centurion 
<clears throat> Lord, you just say the word, and it's done. Believe. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to get you pray to Jesus get him saved then. It don't, it don't work that way. But when you come to him, believe that he can do it. That's where it comes from the heart, faith. Faith knowing. I was just talking to Gary today, this was a little bit ago, of some of our <clears throat> instances in our life, and I'm sure you you can do that too, that we just pray to God and say, Lord, it's in your hands. I know you're going to take care. It's there. You do. You do. And I've seen this happen over and over, y'all. I've seen it happen where God takes care of me. Literally. You know, I, you know, in my past, I was always one of these control type people. I, I, I had to have control, 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 control. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's still, yet yeah, we, 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 we still have a human nature. But since Jesus came into my heart, my life, I've learned slowly and slowly and slowly Yours, Lord, you take care of I pray, I believe, I know He will, and He doesn't. I'll give you one little example of that little guy right there. It's a long story, but I won't go into it. But, you know, I said, Lord, if it's your will for my wife and I to raise that little boy, it's in your hands. And He did. And that's what we are lost forever. At our age, we're not all I had. I jumped up with joy, but you know, it's a blessing. Yeah, it's just from God. And God put them there. Um, <clears throat> but that's just one yesterday. You know? And there's many, many, many different incidents that you just got to believe. Ask Him to come into your heart. Ask Him to say, Lord, I want to believe. I need redemption. I need forgiveness. Bring Him into your heart. Ask Him. Ask Him. Ask him what you need. Maybe you have a relative that needs healing. Maybe you have a doctor's uh, uh, something that you need healed for. Maybe you have, who knows what you have. I don't know in, in your life. But I'm sure each and every one of you has something that you need to ask Jesus. So today, sit back and take, take it all. Put it down at the foot of the cross, the foot of Jesus. Rise up, pray, and ask Him, Lord, help me. And see miracles happen in your life. But all we have to do is believe. Has anybody got any comments or questions? Just believe, y'all. I'll let you know. <clears throat> Thank you for coming this morning. New Hope Christian Church loves you very, very much. You always be in our prayers. I pray for the best thing that can happen. I hope this morning, if you want to talk to Gary or Harvey or, or I, wherever, if you want the Lord to come in here in your life, we'll sit back and we'll help you say the prayer and you know, invite the Lord into your life. So, right now, we're going to close with the. Uh, uh, with a prayer, okay? Just bow our heads and our hearts. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that we're able to gather here today, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you you pour out your spirit upon these people today and open their hearts and their minds to let you come in. Increase their faith, Lord. We all, Lord, are broken. We all are sinners. You died on that cross 2,000 years ago to redeem us. You said, Lord, in your promises that we ask, in your name we will receive. Let it be your will. Let us, Lord, always come to you humbly. And with tears of perfume, it doesn't matter come to you and believe that you are there for us, Lord, and that you are with us every day. We 
ask you today, Lord, we lift this up to you to guide us this week, to guide us, teach us, love us. We're so grateful for your grace, your love, and your mercy upon us today. We pray all this in your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ.